What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of what I did to install a Chinese diesel heater into my 1991 Volkswagen Westfalia camper van. These Chinese diesel heaters have been a lot of hype on YouTube, on the internet, about their affordability and how good they actually are for the cost. Now one thing that I've noticed is that there is a ton of options on Amazon for these heaters. They all look to be very, very, very similar. Each kit comes with a little bit different options, so it really depends on your needs. The way that I even got onto the idea of installing a diesel heater in my van was from you guys leaving comments on my videos anytime I talked about the Mr. Buddy heater. My biggest question mark anytime I heard about somebody suggesting a diesel heater in my gas powered van again was how is that going to work? Where's the diesel source going to come from if I have a gas powered vehicle? If I had a diesel powered vehicle, heck, that's a no brainer. After doing a little bit of research, I realized that these diesel heaters actually do come with a 10 or 15 liter diesel tank that is designed to feed the system. Prior to making the purchase on one of these Chinese diesel heaters, I scoured the internet for information on other people who have installed one of these or even a similar product into their Volkswagen Westfalia. I didn't come up with a ton of information, so I quickly realized that it was going to be a lot of innovation in the process of getting this thing installed in my van. As soon as I received the product and I actually had it in my hand, I realized that it was going to be quite the challenge. I went through every possible scenario of where I could possibly put this diesel tank. I thought that maybe perhaps I could mount it approximately where I had my Mr. Buddy heater behind my passenger seat. I even thought maybe perhaps I could put it behind my driver's seat between the cabinet and still have enough space to fill it. I thought of ways of how I could mount it up inside my luggage rack. I thought ways of maybe mounting it on the back if I installed a rack on the back of my van. We've even considered the option of mounting the tank underneath the van in a Rotopax type system. In fact, the first couple hours, I was convinced that I actually wasn't going to be able to do it. There was just no way that I was going to be able to fit it inside the Westfalia the way that I wanted to. And when I realized that it just wasn't gonna be possible, I felt pretty defeated about it. But honestly, it just sat here and contemplated and contemplated and contemplated. But there was one breakthrough idea that really changed this whole entire process. With a quick few measurements of the diesel tank, I realized that there was actually the possibility of it fitting in the cabinet underneath the stove. The first idea was this cabinet right here. Like I said, with a few quick measurements, we figured out that the diesel tank could possibly fit front to back. But with this shelf across here and the way I had things organized, it wasn't gonna fit top to bottom. Well, there's always this possibility. This is the original location of the stock Volkswagen Westfalia Dometic refrigerator. Over the years, people have determined that these just are not efficient enough to suffice taking up the space. A lot of people either upgrade to a newer version of the refrigerator or they completely eliminate the refrigerator altogether. That's where the light bulb went off and became a game changer in this whole entire process. This is where we realized it was going to be possible to actually install this diesel heater inside of Volkswagen Westfalia. And voila, right here inside the stock original location of the refrigerator sits the diesel heater tank. Removing the refrigerator from this location is actually fairly simple. In fact, Go Westy has a step-by-step -step video that shows every step of the process in order to get that thing out of there. Check out the link right above here if you're interested in doing that. Over the years, I've had a hard time deciding whether I was willing to give up my refrigerator for a little bit of extra storage. But when it came down to winter time, I decided it was much more important to have nice, dry, safe heat inside the van during the wintertime season, especially while living in it. I was willing to sacrifice the few times that I ever actually use a refrigerator to store cold drinks in. Not only did I gain a nice spot to keep the diesel tank out of sight and out of mind, but I also gained a great amount of storage that actually has come in extremely handy. Inside the cabinet, I'm able to store my propane bottle top burner, my skillet, mugs, drinks, all sorts of stuff. So that space has actually come in extremely handy. In this whole entire setup, I technically didn't lose any storage space. I actually 
gained a lot more usable space. Before you mount your fuel tank, you have to install the metal nipple that comes along with it in the kit. To install that nipple into the plastic fuel tank, check out this next clip. So with this fuel tank, it actually does require drilling depending on uh, your mounting orientation of where you want to mount your tank. Because you can mount it like so, or you can mount it like so. I'm going to mount my fuel tank in this orientation so that I can fuel outside of my cabinet. Fuel pickup is going to basically sit at the bottom of this. For my drill bit selection, I want to be able to thread the fuel nipple into the actual plastic. I went to the drill bit selection and I found a drill bit that was just on the verge of actually being able to fit through the nut. On my particular nipple, it is a 1764th drill bit that I selected. This has to come from the inside and this little nipple here has to poke out the hole. The bigger part of this needs to be inside of this. I've cut a length of bailing wire that's going to fit through the length of the tank diagonally. I'm going to feed it through the hole that I drilled and aiming it to come out the hole here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nipple. I've made sure that my o-ring is actually in place of where it's supposed to be. I'm going to feed it onto the end of the wire in the direction that I want the nipple sticking out of the hole that I drilled. And then I'm just going to put a slight bend on it. Then with a slight tug, my wire came out. The nipple here, we want it to still be able to make a nice tight seal. So I'm being light with my pliers and making sure not to damage the nipple. It's actually starting to thread through the hole there, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to take that second O-ring that came with the kit, slip it down over the threads. Then I'm going to take the included flange nut and just thread this down over the top of that. Just cinch that down tightly. And there you go, you've got a nice tight outlet. Hopefully this seal works. We're gonna test it out. Once the refrigerator is moved from this base, we're actually exposed to the back frame wall. There is a rib that runs about three quarters of the way up. It runs horizontally front to back across the van. We need every single ounce of that space to be able to fit this diesel tank inside there. Where you're going to run into any sort of clearance issues is going to be right here at the top of this cap where it meets the cabinet door. In fact, along the back of the tank where it comes in contact with that horizontal rib, we took a heat gun to the tank, took a piece of pipe, and rolled out an indent so that we can fit it all the way back in there. The other thing that you can do if you're running into clearance issues is you can actually take the tank and rotate it back a little bit, which draws the top of the cap back in towards the cabinet a bit. From there, I cut a 10 inch by 10 inch by 3 quarter inch piece of plywood and I mounted it to the left side of the wall. From there, that's where I mounted the diesel tank. And what that piece of plywood does is it actually spaces the tank out so that you have enough clearance from the lip of the cabinet door so you've got access to the filler neck of the tank. To finish out the cabinet so that it's a nice usable space, I took a quarter inch piece of flexible plywood that has a nice finish on it. I cut around the original fixtures that are still mounted inside the cabinet and it fits in there nicely around the tank, around the original fixtures, and finishes off this space nicely. Once you've got the metal nipple installed, you've got the fuel tank mounted inside the cabinet, then you've got to get your fuel over to the heater. Out the nipple, you're going to go, first of all, into the inline fuel filter that is provided in the kit. After the fuel filter, it's going to be fed into the electric pulse pump. After the electric pulse pump, I fed mine through the bottom of the floor and out the van again underneath. Once I went through the floor, then I zip tied the fuel line up and around a safe spot across the frame to where it was going to go into the heater. With my kit, I got the digital LCD thermostat controller and I mounted it over here by the rest of my electronics on the back of my cabinet. This provides easy access whether I'm sitting in the couch or I can sit up in bed and reach it. The nice thing about this is it provides lots of different options to be able to control your heater system. First of all, it is a digital thermostat. You can set it for a particular temperature and it'll switch between low and high in the effort to keep it at that temperature that you desire. 
From there, the other option is adjusting the pump volume or the amount of fuel that's being fed to the heater, thus turning it up or down in temperature. From there, you've also got other options of error codes. So if something's going on with your heater, it'll actually give you an error code and you can help diagnose the problem. Also in the digital readout, it'll tell you if the fan is turning, it'll tell you if the pump is on, it'll tell you if the glow plug is running, it'll tell you if the exhaust and intake is operating. So it's got some pretty cool features that make it handy for being able to observe your system as you use it. The wiring harness that comes with the kit makes it extremely handy to be able to install this. All the ends of the wires come outfitted with plugs that are designed to plug into the particular component at that spot, whether it's your electric fuel pump, whether it's the digital thermostat, or whether it's hooking up to the actual heater itself. It all comes with plugs ready to plug and play. From my digital thermostat, I've got a wire that goes down to the electric pump inside the cabinet. The rest of the wires run across underneath my seat and over to where I've installed the heater. Again, everything is plug and play. Everything's well sorted and ready to go. The other part of the equation on this diesel heater is having a 12 volt source. Now I've got mine hooked up to my Energy Solar Kodiak battery system that's stored underneath my cabinet. That's what I use for an auxiliary battery system here in my Vanding in Westphalia. Having it hooked up to an auxiliary battery system eliminates all of the worry of it running down your starter battery and being left stranded. So definitely consider putting this on an auxiliary battery system for your 12 volt source. All right guys, and here underneath my seat is where I've installed the Happy Buy 5KW 12 volt diesel heater. This is the unit responsible for producing all of the heat and it's tucked away nicely in underneath my Volkswagen Westfalia rear seat. Out of sight, out of mind, it sits here, it chugs away, and it produces nice, dry, quiet heat. By unscrewing this end cap at the intake of the heater, you're actually able to remove this cover and have access to the whole inside of the heater. As you can tell here, this is the fan that's sucking in air. This is the heating element, so all the diesel and everything is combusting inside of this chamber here, creating the heat, then the fresh air blows over that, heats up, and comes out the other side, nice and warm and dry and ready to keep it cozy. The great thing about having it mounted in this location here in the Westphalia is it's easy access for any sort of maintenance that you might need to do to it. The glow plug is accessible right here on top so it's very easy to get to the heater and maintain it in any way necessary. Since this heater is installed in a confined space underneath my seat it's got to be able to breathe. It's got to be able to draw enough fresh air in to be able to heat it and efficiently exhaust hot air. So since it's mounted so close to this particular wall right here what I did down below here is I cut a three inch hole, which is essentially the same size as the actual intake itself, so that it's got a direct feed to more volume of air that's coming from this space here, as well as this space here, and between the seat, it's actually able to draw air in. Wherever you mount it, you wanna make sure you've got enough space so that your heater can take in enough fresh air so that you get the maximum amount of hot air coming out on this side. So this is a 5kW or 5 kilowatt, which with the research that I've done translates over to about 17,000 BTUs. Diesel powered and it's designed to run on a 12 volt system. I purchased mine off of Amazon for $169.99, free shipping. It's sold by a company called Happy Buy. I've had the opportunity to use it for quite a while now, and I tell you what guys, it's been worth every single penny of the $169.99 with free shipping. On those extremely cold nights, I turn it on low just to take the edge off, and I wake up the next morning and it's nice and warm in the van and ready to go. Because storage is always at a premium inside of a small space like a Volkswagen Westfalia, especially when you're living in the space, uh, this was always a key space to be able to store important things. So my number one concern when installing this heater was determining a spot that didn't take up any important storage room. 
This was the best possible scenario of anywhere in the van that I could come up with. Yeah, it takes up a little bit of space, but I actually do have quite a bit of space to be able to store extra stuff down inside here, around it. I do like to try and keep it away from the uh, exhaust here as much as possible. But what I did do is I took a leftover piece of that quarter inch plywood that I used for the back of the cabinet and it just so happens to be able to fit in a cross here. I put a screw in over on this side so I had a spot to be able to rest on and I tuck it up underneath my speaker. On this side it just sits on top of the box that covers the heater for the actual Vanagon heater. So on here I'm able to still store shoes up here. Other camera equipment and tools sit in nicely. Other jackets, other clothes, whatever it may be that you want to store here. One of the concerns I had with putting the board over here was am I going to be inhibiting the intake of the heater at all. What I've done is I left a good amount of gap on the sides here. Uh, all the way the length of this board. That also allows a nice gap for my wiring to be able to flow into the heater. But also along the back there's airspace. I feel that there should be sufficient enough volume for the intake of the heater in this particular situation. Right here behind me you can hear the diesel heater chugging away on the outside. Just in front of my rear passenger side tire, you can see the exhaust outlet. That is where all of the heat and exhaust fumes from the internal combustion portion of the heater are being exhausted safely outside the van. There is a silencer or a muffler option for these heaters that you can mount on the end of your exhaust pipe. And evidently that's supposed to make quite a difference on the outside of your van and keeping it quiet. Even in my particular situation, when the heater's all the way on high, I don't ever hear this little roar that you hear on the outside. I don't hear that on the inside. So there you go. It's true. The Chinese imported diesel heaters will work and function inside of a Volkswagen Westfalia. It's completely changed van life for me when it comes to cold weather camping. Very thankful for all of the comments for the people who suggested this idea. Thank you to the Mr. Buddy Heater who kept me warm for all those years, but it was definitely time to step up the game when it comes to heating the van life. If you guys are interested in this five kilowatt diesel heater, check out the link that I'm gonna post in the information down below. Guys, if you're new to the channel, push the subscribe button. Jump on board for more videos like this. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, then click the like button. It's your comments, it's your feedback, it's you guys hitting the like button. That's what gets these videos out to the masses. So thank you for all of your support. Guys, peace out, keep on trucking.